as your body grows thicker. Your mind must flower. It's great to learn, cause knowledge is power. Hello and welcome to the Mothership. I am, of course, the Commander in Chief, Black Sivrak. Hello and welcome back to the Mothership. Thank you for joining us. We have a very special, special unboxing today brought to you by Manic Plastic Toys. For all of your action figure and accessory needs, go check out Manic Plastic Toys before you check anywhere else. He's a member of the community by way of Weird Fantastic Toy Adventure Bill and Motu Joneser. He's a hell of a guy. Big Mike, we call him. The link to his website is in the description. You can also find him on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but uh, that is where I procured this lovely collectible. This is the gold label McFarlane. And this also has the signed Todd McFarlane card inside. And um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, this was not a collectible that I ever thought I was going to get, especially the signed card. Um, but at Manic Plastic Toys, he has the probably the most competitive prices on the internet. So if there's something that you're looking for, uh, loose or on card, go check out Manic Plastic Toys before you go anywhere else. All right. Um, he's got a good website, easy to use. All the categories are right there, whether it's Marvel Legends or Motu, Black Series, Marvel, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, yeah, um, <clears throat> this is an awesome piece. I've been looking for this for a while. Most people will know that anywhere, especially on Evil Bay, you know, this is going for what, between 60 and 110 on most days and uh, I was able to pick this up at um, Manic Plastic Toys for considerably less considerably less so go on over visit Big Mike ManicPlasticToys.com link in the description um, and hopefully you can find something over there that you need if you do find something that you're looking for I can guarantee you it will probably be the lowest price you've ever seen it. So go check out Big Mike, all right? So without further ado, let's get this guy out of his plastic coffin. Yes, that's right, I'm opening it. Signed card included, all that jazz. I'm opening it because as cool as this guy looks in the package, he's gonna look a thousand times cooler on a shelf uh, with the display base and the tombstones uh, the two capes and the multiple hands, like, this is completely radical. So, very excited to get this out, get it on display. Um, build, I'll probably build a special shelf for this guy. We'll probably frame this signed card that's inside there. So, stay tuned for more. I am the Lack Man. All right, welcome back. This is actually the next morning as um, I had to shoot. I had to shoot this um, figure in its package uh, after nightfall. After nightfall, ha! I had to shoot that then because um, the reflection was just too. I'm sure you noticed in the intro the reflection was still bad. Uh, so, but this is the next morning here at the turntable of awesomeness. We have assembled. Now, there's a couple different ways. I've noticed a lot of people have the Batman facing the other way. And uh, we will try to show that. The Batman facing the other way with the uh, bottom part of his cape flowing toward the, um, toward the tombstones. I particularly actually like the tombstones behind him. Um... But anyway, yeah, cool figure. So this uh, particular figure, it's got a little warp in the leg. Uh, I'm sure, I watched a couple other reviews and it looks like anyone who is purchasing this figure years down the line, if you're, if you're taking it out of the box, 
you're gonna get Batman's one leg is gonna be uh, warped a little bit. Um, so, and we'll see that after a bit. I think it might slowly be going back into place, but um, we'll see, because the bend now, after a few minutes of it not being in the plastic coffin, it seems to not be as bent. So, also, it looks like um, Batman's right um, ear is going to be slightly bent. I've looked at um, a bunch of reviews just to see, and everybody's is everybody's same right ear is crooked like that. So, but we we'll probably use some hot water and maybe try to get that back into place. Now this figure comes with this stand, which we will get in there and I'll show you how it works. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this episode is brought to you by this cup of coffee and some Copenhagen snuff, which we're about to have some. Um, but yeah, so this figure comes with a set of arms, which I guess you can't put on the figure. You can't put these arms on the figure while that cape is on. All right, but, and uh, we'll get views of all this, ladies and gentlemen. Comes with an extra set of hands that has a different sculpt on the top. You see these uh, ridges and knuckles. That apparently is from a different Batman. And then you can see the hands that are on here are smooth. We have a cloth cape, which we have not taken out of the package yet are out of the rubber band, but we will. Um, and we get a strange, very thick battering. Very cool. So those are the accessories. Here is the, the signed card. I guess it's signed on the other side. I haven't taken this off of the thing yet. I just cut this, cut this out. So, um, I guess maybe at the, I'm gonna just leave this like this um, until we get maybe a card frame, I don't know. I would have hoped that the signature was on this side, but I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, just to uh, give the Cape Crusader a little look, you can see down in this area where this cape is connected, this is extremely hard. And uh, like I said, a lot of people actually have it displayed with uh, Batman facing the other way from this direction. If you look, if you look at quite a few reviews, you can plainly see that they have the back of the headstone showing. Um, but between this face on the base, and we'll probably look take a closer look at the base, and the writing on these tombstones, this is the front. This is definitely the front. Um, I guess I could look on the box and see. I didn't think about that. I was just looking at other people's reviews. Yeah, see, they have on the box, they have it set up like this. There's the tombstones behind him. See? So, that's what makes sense to me. And it looks pretty good. Now, the part of the figure is resting on the cape right here. But that helps push his head and neck up through the hole. I've noticed that if you, if you, this goes into this plug that you see right there. I'm sure you're familiar with this. And this sets up in there. And when you push up on the cape, the cape goes up higher on his face. And it doesn't really look that cool, uh, in my opinion. Pardon me for sniffing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still getting over this coronavirus that I've had for the fourth time or fifth time but either way it's gotten a lot less every time so it's fine but yeah give you a little turn here there are peg holes uh, on this base this base is radically awesome man it would be cool to just find this base for sale and use it for all sorts of figures, you know? Um, Nick Fury and the Howling Commando. Anybody can be hanging out in a graveyard. Uh, when I was uh, four years old, we, my parents and I, we lived in a uh, 
very rural area of Colorado called Fort Morgan. Shout out to Cap and to Chris 1000's Ghost. Uh, we used to live in Boulder, uh, Sh Sugarloaf Mountain, and but also toward the end of uh, our time living in Colorado, we lived in Fort Morgan. And I actually learned to ride a bicycle in the cemetery in Fort Morgan as the cemetery was the only place that had concrete. Um, it was the only place where there was concrete. They had little concrete walking paths in between the cemetery. So uh, I also spent, gosh, 27 years as a um, grave digger in Nenana, Alaska. Um, you know, for about 27 years, 26 years, every grave that was dug in Nenana, Alaska lacked at it. So there's a little knowledge drop for you. I'm going to have a little chew here. I feel like this episode is going to be a little on the longer side. I hope you guys enjoy it. We will, um, we will, um, do a couple more poses with this guy. Uh, we'll do a little bit of looking around, but let's go ahead and fade to black. We will, um, put him in possibly a different pose with this same cape. We'll show you that real quick. And then after that, we will get to, um, I'll make sure I don't stain this with tobacco. We will get to the uh, articulation. We'll get to this cape. We'll get to put the arms on there and we'll see what goes on, all right? So stay tuned, coming right back at you. All right, so as you can tell, and you'll probably see it better. So the now we have the figure facing the same direction, away from the, uh, with his back toward the uh, headstones. But now we are utilizing the stand, which you can barely see. <clears throat> and the one thing I've noticed with the stand, no matter what direction you face him, it, it does put the feet at a strange, like a fairly unnatural, um, It looks very unnatural. I think that's a real goofy look, you know? And if you turn around this way, you can see even more so if you look down there at the feet. So I, the stand, which you can see here, is definitely not necessary for this figure. The, the peg holes are very tight and his feet can go directly in there. You have to brace a foot on something because as I said, if you if you give him like a free floating feel, see his head starts to, he starts to sink in the cape. It starts to sink in the cape. So it's not, not my favorite. Um, I don't think I'll be using this stand at all because it, it seems to uh, be too static. Uh, you can get these feet in the peg holes just fine. So let's, um. Let's fade to black, let's keep the stand on there, turn him around where the tips of his capes are going that way. Uh, and then we will um, also try the same direction but with the peg holes uh, on the feet. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we have the, um, obviously we have the Batman flipped around where the tombstones are now, but he's facing them. You have to make sure to, you don't have to, but so I've gotten the cape behind the, um, and I've seen a lot of, uh, there's a lot of YouTube reviews actually where um, they have them set up this way. But like I said, between the names on these tombstones and the uh, face that he's standing on, there's a really cool statue of, which I, these are all supposed to be his relatives, right? So. Um, I don't think he would be standing. I don't think he would be standing on his own relatives. Let me turn this way and see if we can't get him. See, we he only wants to look the one way. You see, because of the shoulders of the cape, you can kind of get that, but you can see that there's more room on this other side to get his head this way, my Instagram is blowing up for some reason. And then you can see here how his head starts to sink down into the, into the um, cape. See? 
So, uh, I have seen some YouTube YouTubers display it this way. It does, in a way, look cool. The composition is definitely not that off. Um, it doesn't mimic, I don't think it mimics the original artwork, but I can't remember. Um, the composition is not totally off this way, but there's just a few small things. You see this foot is floating in air, you know, um, so this is not a winner of a, uh, of a stance. And also because of that, the chin, if you can see there, the chin is starting to, um, sink down into the cape. See? Try to get that into focus real quick for you. Yeah, see the chin, and that's the one of the problems with the stand here, is, um, getting that to, uh, not do that all right so let's um let's remove the blue rod stand right here and do a couple more poses with this cape on the base using the um the uh pegs that are on the base all right stay tuned all right welcome back so we we fiddle fucked around with uh putting the figure uh facing the other deray other direction, other deray, what? We messed around with that and found that there really was no way to properly do that as the cape, the hard cape interfered quite a bit. So you can see, if you look at this angle, we got this leg is not quite where it needs to be um, to be realistic looking from this angle. Um, but there are a couple pegs. I believe the first stance we showed you, this foot was in this peg. We have another peg further back. So we'll give you a little spin on the turntable. I think this is definitely, um, I don't know, Todd. Uh, the concept is cool. I think the execution is lacking a little bit. I would probably give you an... I mean, I think it's awesome and you don't see anything like this. And so I'm going to be slightly kind. And on execution, as far as the base of this figure, and um, I'm going to give you probably a 75 or an 80. Uh, I think if the base was bigger, um, I think the base needs to be a little bigger. Um, that way you can get in these details that you want to see that they're not covered up by the cape. Um, Cause the, you gotta get everything just right. Cause if there's tension on this cape in any way, it, it does kind of mess up the whole um, flow of what's going on here, you know? But still an awesome figure. Again, y'all check out Manic Plastic Toys. This is a, I got a good buy on this. So, um, all right, so let's fade to black. Let's take this cape off. We'll put on this fabric cape and the arms and we'll see what goes on next. All right, all right I wanted to take this opportunity real quick just to show you. So the head um, has this gap on it uh, when you don't have any capes on it. And then I wanted to show you all this leg. How weird is that? There's something off about that. You can see it's it's bent to the inside like your old uncle who broke his leg in the 40s and never got it set right. And I think that might be from the packaging. I've only seen a couple reviews where the leg was also like that. And they, like I, bought the figure, you know, recently as this is an older figure. So this is, there's some stress in the packaging and then look at this. Look at this dog leg looking. Now I've seen some other people's figures who you know opened them um, as soon as that came out and they don't seem to have this. So look at this, uh, it's just, it's very strange. Very strange. And uh, slightly disappointed in you there, um, Todd McFarlane. McFarlane so yeah and like at I don't even at first I thought 
you know, is is my and that could even be on I thought it was on backwards, but you can see the calf muscle. So I don't know what's going on there. But luckily, at least with the big hard cape, you can't see it. Um, also, I thought maybe that this, see how there's no gap here. There's no gap here, but the knee is in the front. There's no gap here, but the knee's not in the front. And then when I turn it a little bit, there seems to be a gap that opens up that's not on the other leg, right? But how weird is that? Look at that. Y'all see that, right? That's weird as fuck. And, and Todd, that kind of looks like garbage. But I don't think you'll be able to see any of that. Um, not exactly sure how I will display it. I probably will display it with that hard cape. But anyway, so let's fade to black. Let's get this soft goods cape on it. Let's get his arms on there. And we'll put him back on this base and check it out. All right, so All right here we are. We have the... Uh, Cape and arms on. Uh, the one arm is very difficult to get in um, and extremely stiff, so that's a little bit scary. Um, if we pull the cape back just a little bit, you can still kind of see that strange dog leg look, but it's not as um, accentuated in this stance. Um, and there is a massive amount of cape here. It's almost, it's a very nice fabric and everything, but it's almost too much. So, but we'll check out this stance uh, and a couple different of the uh, We'll change around the um, the foot positions just to see what we can get it to look like. So, yeah, there he is in his uh, in his cape. This cape definitely reminds me of the the old school version. It even feels the same. It's it's a cool cape. So anyway, yeah, I am the lack man. I'm the walrus. <laughs> Cuckoo kachu. Anyway, yeah, so dig this. So let's do a couple different stances. Um, stances? Let's do a couple different positions and uh, we'll fade to black and be right back. All right, here we just turned and there are four peg holes. Um, I don't think really any two of them are necessarily made to be used with each other. But I have them in this position and you can start to see this gap coming out right there um you can see that the dog legness of the that leg has gone away uh, and that's just a perception but it pulls his hip out so there's definitely some sort of production error or possibly packaging error that's making this guy stretch so if it's if it's 2024 and you're looking for this figure i i don't know you might as well keep it in on box um, because this is not a figure that you're going to just display on the shelf, I don't think, uh, in this configuration. Because it just looks a little bit too goofy. But I'm still very happy with this purchase. This is a this is something that I've wanted since day one. I should have got it on day one. But anyway, so let's do a couple more stances, positions, and we'll um, see what else we can do. All right, well, I was fiddling around for a while because I wanted to try to get him in a kneeling pose as if he was kneeling in front of this grave. Um, but the um, the rubber bat underwear prohibits uh, that kind of, you can't get him in a kneeling stance. And I also wanted to show you, you can see now how the knee is off-centered and the dog leg effect here so McFarlane that is a real disappointment in this figure luckily I was thinking um you know that I was gonna pull this out of the package and be able to um change his stance 
you know, every couple weeks or months or whatever and go back and forth between the capes and things like that. But it just, it seems like that's not really going to be an option for this figure. Um, he'll probably have to get displayed on a high, on a high shelf uh, with the hard cape because it's really the only thing that makes it not look goofy, to be honest with you. So um, I am extremely pleased with the purchase that I made with Manic Plastic Toys. Um, I definitely would have not, I'm very glad that I didn't pull the trigger on an eBay sale, um, you know, cause they were much higher priced. But for the extremely affordable price that I got this, um, this figure, the disappointment in the figure and the disappointment in Todd McFarlane's work on this is, um, I'm not going to say acceptable, but I'm glad I didn't spend any more money on it than I did because it's really, I guess I really should have just kept it in the box and, um, you know, in years to come sold it for a bunch of money because as it is, man, the new Nightfall Batman and the digital Batman and a lot of the other Batmans are seem to be much better than this. The design of this, I love. The long ears, the way the belt is, the colors. You know, that is definitely my Batman. Uh, but McFarlane, man, the execution in this. And again, it, <clears throat> it may not be so much the execution as it is probably that it's been sitting in the package for a while. And it's, it's I think, this joint has warped, which is why the knee is not correct. And then the leg at the knee has also warped. But you can see this weird dog leg effect going on here. And you can see that the knee, this leg is just not straight. And this leg looks good and this leg just looks like shit. So anyway, um, I'm gonna fiddle around with it a little bit more. Uh, see what we can do or make it look like. And um, then we will wrap this thing up. All right, just to show you, this is as much of a kneel as uh, you can get out of them. The back leg can be hidden with the cape a little bit. The only place you can get them to kneel correctly, there's a peg here and a peg here, but this one is the best one, but it makes this toe flip up, which is kind of strange. The ab crunch is almost non-existent, so you can't get any more of a hunch out of them. Um, you can't tell from the camera, but this angle is not too bad um, on the camera. And maybe give him a little bit more down look there where he's like looking at the grave. So that's not a bad position. I tried these other pegs with the front foot and it just makes the rest of it land uh, not right. It looks not that good. And again, the ab crunch is basically non-existent in this figure. Um, <clears throat> maybe some hot water or a heat gun might loosen it up or something, but it's, it's man, it's tighter than Dick's hat band. You know what I mean? So. Give me a little spin on that. So anyway, yeah, let's, um, Let's fade to black one more time. I have a space that Batman may fit on, um, and I'm gonna try him there. I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna put the hard cape back on. We're gonna put him in the, um, basically in the stance that we originally showed you. Um, and we're gonna put him on this display. I built a display, but it's really just for a figure. I'm not positive yet if this base and stuff will fit on it. But um, we will try it out. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we have the Batman in the graveyard set back up on this shelf. I made this shelf for a single Batman figure. So you can see the base does hang over a little bit on either side. I'll give you a little pan up. So for the time being, you can see the dog leg a little bit there. For the time being, we'll probably keep this Batman here as it takes up much more room than uh, than the single figure that was on here. But I'll also give you a 
give you a sneak peek of uh, give you a sneak peek of the rest of the shelf or the rest of this display. So uh, I'm up on the ladder. Let me get down. So we have the uh, a Batman area here. And as we come down, we have a Necco Phantom. And as we come down here, we have two custom Nick Furies. And as we come down here, we have our two Hitmen from Bullet. Um, pay no mind, this is uh, where we will eventually, more than likely put our Christmas display this is just a sneak peek for people who are watch the whole video. Here's another little custom Nick Fury. Another custom Nick Fury right there. Um, but you can see, so we'll try to back up a little bit here and show you the display. And you got Batman up there at the top. So I think, I don't think this will be the permanent place for this Batman, but uh, till we figure out what we're gonna do and where we're gonna put him, we will probably leave him right there in this, uh, this area here. So, so yeah, I have been General Lack Sivrak, also known as the Lack Man. And uh, this episode, again, was brought to you by Manic Plastic Toys. Y'all go check out Big Mike at ManicPlasticToys.com, all right? Link to his Instagram and um, website in the description. One more look at Batman there. So, awesome. And then pan you back out here to this display here. So anyway, I have been the Lack Man. Thank you for joining me and see you next time on Down the Trail.